Hi everyone, welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. We have a very fun project for you today. We're learning to make these tiny little crochet critters with our friend Tamara Kelly. My name is Renee L from Your Inspirations and I'll be helping with any questions you might have during today's class. Please feel free to drop your questions in the chat and we'll make sure that Tamara answers them. While we're getting ready to kick things off, let us know where you're watching from. Over to you, Tamara. All right. Thanks so much. I'm Tamara Kelly from mooglyblog.com. And as Renee was saying, we are making this tiny little pig. Now, we can't actually make the whole pig in an hour, unfortunately. Even though these stitches are tiny, thread takes time. Sometimes more time than regular, well, I should say, thicker yarns. So we are going to, though, go over some of the finer points. Um, I've got some great th uh, thread tips for you. And of course we can talk about all the really um, fun stitches that are used in this pig. It is pretty simple. It's mostly simple stitches. Amigurumi patterns usually are. They're almost, almost all single crochet. Um, this fun guy has some wings and other things that bring in some other stitches and his feet and his tail. But you can see just how tiny he is and how cute and it's kind of hard to hear to show it here on my hand, but he stands up really beautifully all on his own as well. So you can, of course, make this guy in any color. Aunt Lydia's crochet thread size 10 is what we're using for this project today. But to make sure that you guys can see all of it, I'm also going to be demonstrating some of this stuff in Red Heart Super Saver. So if you are someone who wants to make amigurumi, um, but for whom thread is perhaps not the best choice, you can absolutely switch to a bigger yarn and follow the exact same pattern. Red Heart Super Saver is a great choice um, for all amigurumi and you just wanna use the hook size that matches and gives you a nice tight fabric. The recommended yarn for this one though is Aunt Lydia's Classic 10. So this is a 10 weight of yarn. This is going to be, I will say it's, thread's a little different. Thread is different than yarn. So if as you look at a uh, crochet thread, a uh, three is bigger than a 10, a 10 is bigger than a 30. The bigger the number, the thinner the thread. So for this project, it calls for a 10. Again, if you wanna use a different thickness or weight for your own comfort, for your own eyesight, you can absolutely do that. Just go ahead and match the hook to the yarn that you are using. So with the classic 10 here, let's see if we can get this to show up here. We use this teeny tiny hook right here. This is a 1.5 millimeter crochet hook. And in fact, when you're working at this scale, you've got a little bit of leeway. I believe the pattern says you can use, let me double check here, uh, anywhere from 1.5 to a 1.6. So either of those, if you have those in your collection, would be a great choice. And again, if you're switching yarns, you'll want to use the, harn the hook that goes with that particular yarn size. But you can see this is a really small hook size. So a lot of people like to add a little bit of a comfort grip. You can purchase those separately for your steel hooks like this. These are actually made out of steel rather than aluminum typically. So in addition, of course, to the thread and the hook, there are a few other supplies for this one. Um, you'll need some stuffing, not even this much, a very, very small amount of fiber fill, definitely leftovers from another project are all you need for this guy. And of course, then there are the eyes. You can use a French knot with a little bit of black thread or embroidery floss, or you can use some black beads. I've got a few right here. Let's see if I can show them here without spilling them all over the desk. But you can actually use beads. Um, you know, you could probably get some tiny little safety eyes if you wanted to, but you can add those right there for his cute little face. So let's go ahead and switch over to the hand camera. We can take another look here and bring that in nice and evenly here. So here we've got some Aunt Lydia's classic thread. Um, for this pattern, they do ask you to use the metallic as well as a white, which is not great for demonstrating stitches with on camera. So we've got the metallic and some pink today. And again, like I say, you can make your pig, of course, in any color you want. Here's another look at those beads. I found this collection at Michael's. They came in several different sizes in a pack. And then just your standard fiber fill. And here is a little clearer look, I think, at our project today. This is the When Pigs Fly Crochet Amigurumi a free pattern available on Yarn Inspirations. So let's go ahead and crack open our thread here. And we can start talking about some thread tips. Um, I don't, now if we were in person, I'd ask everybody to raise their hands and ask who's worked with thread before. Um, but if you haven't, there's a couple of things that I find that make working with thread just a little bit easier. Now you can see that it comes in a little bit of a different put up. It's got sort of a cardboard cone inside there. 
um, that holds the shape to it. So you don't have to worry about tangling, but you also don't want to try and find a center pull for this. With thread, we just want to slip off the label and find the outside thread, wherever that end may be. But we don't want to try and pull from the inside. I usually just end up kind of looking for what seems to be one of the last overlapping ones and pull until there it is. You can just barely see there, I found the end of the thread. So I'll set that one aside and I'll go ahead and get our metallic prepped here as well. Same thing, if we look for, let me get that centered there. Just kind of look for that outside, that last one. You can tell that went around and start pulling on that one. And there it is. And you'll find your end pretty easily. So those are all set there. So that's um, how to find the end of your thread. Like I say, definitely wanna use the outside end. Don't try and find the one on the inside. Um, but also as you're working with thread, however you tension your yarn, whether you wind it around your fingers or between your fingers, however you like to do it, you'll want to be a little careful because I find when I'm working with thread, I like to work with a really tight tension. I find for whatever reason with thread, I have to keep a little bit more tension on my yarn as I make my stitches. That's great for amigurumi because it's gonna make really tight, nice, even stitches but it can be kind of hard on the hands. So you wanna go ahead and give your hands a break. Even though it's a tiny little project and you might think, oh gosh, I can push right through. Make sure, give your hands a break, give the fingers and the hands you know, a wiggle and let them relax a little bit um, before you go too far because your hands can get a little sore. Additionally, if you do tend to wind your yarn around your finger quite a bit to tension it, that can end up pulling a little bit tight as you're working through there. So just something to be aware, um, keep your tension tight, but again, don't wanna cut off circulation to that little pinky over there either. Um, then of course, there's simply, you can see how very small thread is. Again, we wanna take breaks for our hands, but not just our hands, also for our eyes. Um, anytime you're working and really concentrating at one focal distance for a really long time, every 15 minutes at least or so, you wanna at least look up and look around the room, let your eyes focus somewhere else. It'll just help reduce some eye strain and let you crochet comfortably for a little bit longer that day. Um, if you want to keep going, or if you're having trouble seeing the thread and you don't wanna bump up to a bigger yarn, then I would recommend getting one of those magnifying craft lamps. There's quite a few available, I believe at Michael's, um, and that will really help you see what you're doing quite a bit better. Um, there's wearable ones, there's the lamp kind, whatever works for you. Um, but of course, like I say, with thread, you just need to take your time and keep your tension up and give yourself lots of breaks. So let's go ahead and I'm actually going to start by showing this on our Red Heart Super Saver. I'm using a, what is this? A five millimeter crochet hook with this one today. And I'm going to start um, out with this one and then we'll switch back to the thread. But I wanted to make sure it was a little bit easier to see some of these stitches as we get going here before we demo them in the thread itself. So to start off this pattern of our little pig here, move some of this stuff out of the way. We actually start at the nose and work the body all the way back. Then we make the ears, the feet, and the wings, and of course our little tail, and sew them on at the end. So we start right at the nose and it begins with a magic uh, circle or a magic loop. Kind of the same thing here. There's a few different methods out there for making those, but I'll show you how I make mine. So I've got the end of my yarn, it's Red Heart Super Saver, so this one I did center pull. And I'm going to go in about eight inches or so. I like to leave a nice long line here with thread, even though it's tiny and you might think, well, gosh, I don't need as much to weave in. Your hands and the needle are still a certain size. You wanna still want to go ahead and leave a little bit of length there. So I take the end of my yarn and I'm going to take my forefinger of my non hook hand. So if you're left-handed, it would be your right hand. I'm right-handed, so it will be my left. And I'm going to yarn over my finger twice towards me. So it's the same way I would yarn over a hook towards me once and twice, just like that. There's that tail end, I'll do that again. Once and twice. Then I like to sort of hold onto my yarn here, but I also hold onto this tail so that it's got some tension on it. And then I will slip my hook right under both of those loops. Let's get nice and close there. Then I'm going to just pull that back loop under the other one. I've still got some tension on that tail there with my fingers. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull that loop through. And that sort of locks my magic circle together. 
Now, if we look at our instructions, we put six single crochets in the magic loop. So I'm going to go ahead and start those with a chain one and then work that first single crochet. When I do that, I'm going to go under the loop that goes all the way around my finger, but I also wanna make sure that I go under that tail. When we finish making our stitches here in the magic loop, we need to be able to pull on that tail to close up that circle. So we need to make sure that we go under that tail as well. So I'll yarn over and pull up my loop, yarn over and make my first single crochet. Now that I've put a stitch in it, I can go ahead and pull my finger out. And I know my magic loop will be held open by the stitches themselves. So if I bring that really close up there, you can see we've got one single crochet in our magic loop. So now I'm going to continue. I need five more. So I'm just going to go right into the center of that loop there. And again, I wanna make sure that I go under both of those strands of yarn. Because if we don't go around or over that tail as well, then our magic circle won't, the magic won't happen basically. So there's three of them. I've had a request to do it again from the beginning. So we'll do it one more time. This will be recorded. So this will be up on YouTube within 24 to 48 hours and you'll be able to pause it and slow it down as needed. So we're gonna make our magic loop, also known as the magic ring or the magic circle. It goes by lots of different names. We come in about eight inches or so from the end and we yarn over our non hook finger twice towards us, just kind of as the same way we would if it was a crochet hook. I'm gonna keep some tension on that tail and slip my hook under both of those loops. Let's see if we can get this one a little bit closer here. Then I'm going to just gently pull that back loop or the one that was furthest on my finger under the other one and then yarn over and pull that loop through. Then I look at my instructions and I see it says six single crochets in the magic loop. So I'm going to start with a chain one and then I'm going to work my single crochet right into the loop. I'm going to go under both of those loops, the one that goes all the way around my finger and the one that's just a hanging tail here. Yarn over, pull up my loop, and yarn over and pull through two to finish the single crochet just as I normally would. Then I can take my finger out and our magic loop is held open. So there's one single crochet right now in our loop. We've got five more to go. So as I make those, again, I just wanna make sure that I go all the way through the loop and make sure that that tail is over my hook as well so that it's enclosed in each one of these stitches. So there's two single crochets three, four, five, and six. And then we need to slip stitch to the first one to finish off our round. But before we do that, that's where we get to pull on that tail. So you can see I've got all of them in there. It doesn't really make a great round yet, but it will. I like to kind of steady the stitches with my other hand here as I pull, but you can see how that just pulls right on up. There we go. So now it's all nice and tight and closed in there. And now that other stitch is right there so I can join with a slip stitch. So to finish off round one, we just insert our hook into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through that stitch and pull through the loop of the previous stitch. And we've got our slip stitch. So there we've got our round one. Started with the magic loop and we did six single crochets and we joined with a slip stitch. Now, when you weave in your end with your, after making a magic loop, you always want to make sure that you use your yarn needle and you go back and then forth a couple different directions. You wanna change directions to really lock that in. Um, you know, sometimes when you're working with a really fuzzy yarn or a wool, they might stick, but something a little slicker like thread, you really wanna make sure to weave that end in so that it doesn't pull back out over time, especially if this is something you're going to have kids playing with. Um, it is very small, so obviously they're going to be older children. This one is recommended um, for kids eight and up, but still it's always just a good idea to weave in that end really well to make sure that the magic circle won't, <laughs> won't, uh, won't come back out on us. So that's how we do it in yarn. Now let's go ahead and do it in the thread. So this one, you can see here on our little guy, they have us start with the sparkly stuff. So let's go ahead and pull that end up here. Just you can see there's a little bit of sparkle in this one. 
And the designer had a great tip um, for this one as well. She says that when she went to weaving her ends with this yarn, she actually stripped out the metal part, kind of un, un, uh, unplied. That's the word I'm looking for. She unplied the thread. You can kind of see down here at the end how you're able to do that. Oops, let me get that. It's so tiny. It's hard to get that centered. There we go. You can see how that's coming apart right there just a little bit. Um, when it's time to weave in your ends, if you take that apart, it's a lot easier to weave this end in without the metal part attached. So you can, that is a little tip included in the pattern from the designer. So same thing. We want to come in. Let's see if I can get that a little closer so we can see it here. We want to come in several inches because while the thread is thin and maybe we don't need as much, our hands are still as big. Our hands haven't changed size. So we still need some inches there. We're going to take that thread and go over our forefinger twice towards us, just as we did before. Take our tiny little hook here. See how close I can get to the camera without bumping it. Insert the hook under both of those loops. We're going to grab that furthest one back and just gently pull it under the first one there. Yarn over again and pull that through, through to lock it right there. So I'm doing the same thing I just did in the yarn with the thread. And then I'm going to start my stitches. So I want to chain one and then single crochet into that ring. So again, I want to make sure I go into that ring and under that tail as well. Yarn over and pull up our loop. And yarn over and pull through two. Now you can see. Even though it's tiny stitches, it does take a little bit more time. With thread, you just need to take your time. I'm sure there are some people out there who make doilies and such all the time and can whip right through it. But for those of us who don't use thread every day, it's a little bit slower of a yarn. It's more of enjoy, sit back and enjoy the process. So there is one of those single crochets. Then again, we wanna make sure every time we go into that ring, we go under both of those loops. So just very carefully grab that thread and bring it up and make our single crochet. So there's two and three and four. Hopefully you guys know how to single crochet. If you are new to crochet and so you need more of a stitch tutorial, there are learn to crochet classes here on the Michaels YouTube channel. And I've got some on the Moogly YouTube channel as well. So now I've just been making single crochets and chatting, so I don't know how many I've made. So let's see if we can get these close enough to count them here together. So with these tiny little stitches here, see just how tiny they are. You will need to, I find it's easier to look at those top V's to count those stitches. And we can start counting backwards from the last one here. We've got one, two, three, looks like four and five right there. So I'm going to put one more in there. Like so. And then with six single crochets in there, it's time to pull on that tail. Now you can see with the thread and sometimes with yarn too, it gets wound around that other loop a couple times. I like to just give that a little pull and pull it out of there so it's not wound around our loop. We don't want to add extra bulk, especially with thread. Just want to take our time, get that all cleared out. And then two, you'll see, and I find this tends to happen with thread for me, that row of single crochet there that it's about to become around, it really wants to kind of twist. You can kind of see that's the bottom of the stitches right there. It's trying to sort of twist around the thread. So you want to, as much as you can here, sort of straighten those out so that they're facing up, so to speak, the right direction there, and hold on to those. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull up my loop here so I can set down this hook and stop fiddling with it at the same time. There we go. So I'm going to pull up on that loop so I don't lose it. Hold on to those stitches so that I know they're facing out this way before I pull down and close up our magic circle here just so that the stitches face all the right way out. There they are. So you can see they're starting to curve around. 
need to find that tail again here. It really wants to wind around. There we go. And then just keep pulling down on that end until your tail, your magic circle rather, closes up. There we are. Sometimes it takes a couple little pulls. But there you can see whoop, our tiny little round of six single crochets. So then, of course, we need to join with a slip stitch, just like we did before. So let me look at it here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Find, find that first single crochet there. Find the working end of the yarn, not the tail end of the yarn. And we can join with our slip stitch. There we go. All right. So that is, if you're doing it in the thread, in the metallic thread, that is what round one should look like. So you're probably getting the idea why I said take lots of breaks for your hands and your eyes. This is a very cute project, but it does take a little bit of time. So in our original pattern, in the, the written pattern for the When Pigs Fly Crochet Amigurumi, round two is simply chain one and two single crochets in each stitch around. So on our big guy here, we can kind of see a little bit better what I'm doing. That simply chain one and put two single crochets in each stitch. Again, amigurumi are usually made with um, single crochet stitches. So you don't have to know fancy stitches. Now, don't do what I just did and start crocheting with the tail. Let me pull those back out. There we go. Even with yarn, sometimes you'll grab the wrong one. At least I do. That happens to me all the time. We chain one. And then we've got two single crochets in each of those stitches around. So you've got an idea what, you know, those stitches look like, of course. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that one aside. But in our little tiny sample here, sometimes I find it's so hard if I don't have a magnifying glass to count my stitches, it, it's important to just do them as count them as you do them. So, you know, it's only 12 stitches, two stitches in each stitch around adds up to 12. So we can count to 12, hopefully <laughs> without getting distracted. So we just want to find that very first stitch there. So I can get in, in there close enough to get it to focus. There we are. And do one. And two and continue that all the way around. Two single crochets in each one of those stitches. Now I have one that I did already do right here. It's, it's a little different color. This one is a white metallic, which I think is the one that's actually recommended in the pattern. But again, white on camera can be a little bit difficult, but you can see there, if we can get that to show up, there we go. That is what it looks like at the end of round two. So getting a little bit bigger and easier to handle, but still certainly very small. I think I was about to lose my stitch there. So I wanna pull that up because after, let me double check my instructions here, but yep, after round two is when we break this yarn and switch over to our second color of thread. So where did my scissors ran off to somewhere? Here we are, grab a pair of scissors. And we can simply, at that point, cut our yarn or our thread and pull that end on through. There we go. Okay, so let's come back to our example here where we can see things just a little bit better. Now, I'm going to make a few more stitches on this one. So we've got a little bit of a better view because the next big move that we have to do is we've got some front loop only and back loop only action. And this is actually a little bit harder to spot in this pattern um, because it's done a couple of different ways. If you look at the instructions for round three, um, it says join MC, which would be our main color. So for me it would be pink, for um, the original it would be the plain white. Uh, it says to join that with a slip stitch to the back loop of any single crochet. So we need to think about front loop versus back loop. And I'll show you that what that means here in a moment. 
But also, I want to show you a little stitch that I think you might prefer to joining with that slip stitch. Um, we're still going to work it in the back loop only, but I think it will give um, a little bit better result and will be a little bit easier, especially when working with this tiny thread. So let me just double check and make sure I got my 12 stitches in here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Oop, silly me. I crocheted in the slip stitch. That's why I was double checking. Thought that seemed like a lot. So two, four, six, eight, 10. Okay, 12. Now we've got them. There we go. So now I'm going to go ahead and join with our slip stitch here in our first stitch. There we go. So now we've got much larger, our round two circle. And we can go ahead and break our yarn. And just weave that end in, of course, when we weave in the rest of our ends. But I don't have a separate color for this one, so bear with me. We're going to rejoin the same color and pretend it's a new color. So the way it's written is we join with a slip stitch to the back loop only. Let's take a quick look at the top of those stitches. Again, it's gonna be a lot easier to see here, hopefully, in the yarn than in the thread. So when we look at the top of a crochet stitch, we're used to looking at that V, right? But, and we can turn it this way, and when we look at a chain, we might say it looks like a group of, a line of nested Vs, but normally we're working our project from one side or the other. So when you look at those two loops at the top of a stitch, so we can get that to focus a little better. There we go. The front loop is the one that's always closest to you, the crocheter, and the back loop is the one that's always furthest away. It's always relative to you, the crocheter. So if I told you to crochet in this stitch in the front loop only, let me get that a little better centered, there we go. If I wanted to do this stitch in the front loop only, I would put my hook under just that front loop to make the stitch. If I wanted to do it in the back loop only, I wouldn't come from behind. I would go down in the center of that stitch so that I could go under just that back loop. Let me try and move that a little bit further away. Oop, I bumped the camera, that doesn't help. All right. So we've got the front loop that's always closest to you, the crocheter. We go under just that one this way. We come up under that and we wanna split right in the center there. So that back loop is behind our hook. When we go under the back loop only, we put our hook right in the center of that V so that we go under just that back loop. We're still pushing the hook away from us, but we're going under just one of those loops. So I don't know about you guys, but a lot of people, myself included, when they first learn to crochet, think that you do only go under one of those loops. Of course, then later you find out, nope, we were supposed to go under both of them, but sometimes you go, do go under just one for certain effects. Now, if I were to turn this for some reason, which we won't do in this project because it's amigurumi in the round, but if I were to turn a project, now this is the front loop. It's still the one closest to me. So it doesn't matter on the fabric itself. It's always relative to you. So let's see, I can get that just a little bit closer. So that's the front loop and that's the back loop. Um, if we're having trouble getting that to show up on camera, I apologize, but you've hopefully have seen the top of your stitches before. And so you've got an idea what the top of a crochet stitch looks like. You've got the two loops, the one closest to you is front, the one that's furthest away is back. So what the instructions tell us to do is to join with a slip stitch in the back loop only of any of the stitches. Doesn't really matter which one. So the way it's written, we would insert our hook under just that back loop only. So right in the middle of the stitch there. And then we would yarn over and pull our loop through find the working end, not the tail end here. Get that out of the way there. And then we would simply chain one or you can consider it a slip stitch and pull down on that tail. And now it's nice and connected. However, what I would like to recommend, there we go, get that out of there, is that instead you try joining with a single crochet. So let me show you how I do that. I'm gonna take the yarn. I'm gonna actually lay this down a little bit so it's a little easier to see. And we are going to flip it over like this to make a little loop, okay? Then I'm going to put my hook into it from behind. Basically, very simply, I want the tail end of the yarn 
to be in front of the working end of the yarn as it's on the hook right here. If that's difficult, and perhaps if you're working in thread, it might be easier, especially in thread, go ahead and make a slip knot. And just go ahead and put your slip knot right on the hook, like so. Then I come back to my project. I've got my slip knot on my hook already. Find. Let's see if I, that looks pretty clear to me. I don't know. I think that looks pretty clear there on screen. So what I'm going to do is then just go right in the center there under that back loop only. Find my working yarn here and attach to the skein. Yarn over and pull a loop up and through that stitch. And now simply yarn over and pull through two. And we've joined with a single crochet. Let's do that one more time. I'm going to start out by making my slip knot and putting it on my hook. Then I come back to my project here, my round two. Find any stitch, doesn't matter which one. There we go. And insert our hook so that it goes under just that back loop, because this is back loop only. Yarn over and pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through two to finish it. So now we've joined with a single crochet. So what we then do is we single crochet in the back loop in each single crochet around. So this round is worked even, still 12 single crochets. So we just go again into that back loop of the next stitch and work another single crochet into the back loop and work a single crochet all the way around. Now what this does is it leaves that front work loop unworked right there. Let's see if we can get that to focus a little better. There we go. And that creates a really nice distinctive line because since we're working even, that row is going to bend back. And you can see how that gives a little ridge that will then become the ridge, this guy didn't focus here, of our little snout. You can see there's those unused front loops right there in the thread. So that makes it a little easier to see. Now, with our wee little thread here, see if we can bring up our pink and see if we can spot the front loop only and back loop only. If the regular yarn was fuzzing out, I'm a little concerned if we'll be able to get this one to focus well enough to show it, but, ooh, this one looks really good. It's a really pretty V right there, there and there. So again, we can go under both loops like I just did, or we can go under just that front loop or go down in the middle there and go under just that back loop. See if we can get that to show up right there. So we can crochet in the back loop only of that thread. Now, I pointed out that it's written a couple of different ways in the pattern because I don't want you to miss them. In round three, which we were just talking about, let's see if I can get that up there. It's SCBL, that single crochet in the back loop. But then we come down to the fourth round, you'll see there's instructions here working in both loops. That's really nice that they spelled that out. It's not usually spelled out. If they don't say it's both loops, but as we come here to page two and the fifth round, that is working in the front loops only. So sometimes it's sort of written in the pattern um, like we saw in round three, and sometimes it's called out right in the front. When it's called out like this, it's definitely going to be each one of those stitches for that round. Turns out to be the same for this one, but it's just a little bit more hidden with the SCBL. So I just want to point that out to you guys. It's the, the front and the back loops kind of, uh, you know, a little bit harder to see. Um, now I see somebody asked a question about single stitches in the yarn. I'm not quite sure what that means. So if we could have a little clarification on that, that would be awesome. Um, but are there any other questions I can answer Renee before we continue on um, with some of the other stitches in this pattern? Um, 
nothing other than that. Um, although I did just want to ask, because we are demonstrating with both um, Super Saver and mm -hmm. the thread, um, Scarlett had also asked you keep doing rounds if she's using yarn instead of thread. I said to copy the same steps. You are going to get yeah. a slightly larger project, but it'll be the same, right? Yes, you would follow the pattern exactly as written with yarn if you're using yarn instead of thread. Um, same number of rows, same number of stitches. It's just going to be overall. Well, you can see how big the snout is here <laughs> to give you some visual idea of how much bigger this one's going to be. So yes, it's the exact same pattern. You just want, the only adjustment is if you change the hook, or excuse me, if you change the yarn, you will need to change the hook to match the yarn because I would not want to try and use this yarn with this little <laughs> hook. Does not look like a good time. Definitely bump no. both up. Otherwise, Yes, you can just follow the pattern exactly as written. Um, if you're working, if it calls for working rounds, working rounds, um, don't change anything other than what you're working with. That part is totally fine. And that's one of the great things about Amigurumi. You don't have to worry about the type of yarn so much. You can really use whatever yarn or thread you like to give you the effect that you want to see, um, you know, in your finished project. It's not going to... Um, you know, it might change the size, but it doesn't have to fit anybody, I guess is basically what I'm saying. You've got some creative freedom there for sure. So you can see here, there's that snout. There are some of those front loops or excuse me, back loop only stitches. Let me pull out a couple more here. If I wanted to do the front loop only ones that come up later in the pattern, again, I just go right under that front loop. Make sure I come up in the middle of the stitch there and make that single crochet. Now, one thing you might notice when you're making back loop only single crochets is that it tends to push the fabric back. When you make front loop only single crochets, it tends to push the fabric forward a little bit. Um, another thing to note is that working in the back loop can give you a slightly shorter stitch. Uh, working in the front loop sometimes gives you a little bit drapier fabric, a little bit softer fabric. So those are some uses for that as well. Um, I'm not going to be working through every round of this pattern. I saw a question just pop up. Um, I'm just kind of demonstrating the first couple here and then going over some of the specific stitches because again, this pattern is just too long to get through the whole thing in an hour and I wanted to hit on some of these finer points. So that is the front loop and the back loop only. Um, and then I wanted to talk to you about something that doesn't come up until a little bit later in the pattern. So as we come along here, we make our snout, we expand a little bit for the head. You can see we're increasing here some more Then the 19th, nine to 19th rounds, we work even. So just one stitch in each stitch. But then when we get to the 20th round, that's when we're going to start decreasing. So interestingly, it is a front loops only round, but it's also where we're going to be getting to right here. We're going to start working our way back down for the tail end of our pig. So when you make a decrease in this pattern, the way it's written is a single crochet two together. Move that out of the way here a little bit. So we've got a little clearer view. So let's make a single crochet two together the way it's written. Generally, a single crochet two together, we insert our hook in the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, then we insert our hook in the next stitch after that and yarn over and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. So you can see we worked into two stitches, but there's just one V at the top. We only actually made one stitch. We've reduced from two down to one. However, particularly in Amigurumi, there is a different type of decrease called an invisible decrease that is often really popular um, simply because it's, a lot, a lot, a little bit, a lot, depending on the yarn, it is harder to see. It is more difficult to spot in your fabric. Um, you know, if you've done a lot of crocheting, sometimes when you have a single crochet two together or another decrease, you can see a little lump there. You can tell that there's that extra strand in it. And this one is just a little bit sneakier. So this one's called an invisible decrease. And this isn't something that's generally written in the pattern. Sometimes it's written into amigurumi patterns, but sometimes it's just one of those little tricks, kind of like joining with the single crochet that you can add on your own. So same thing. We want to turn these two stitches into one stitch. Now, with this one, what's interesting about this round is that she had us working it in the front loop only. And the invisible decrease is always worked in the front loop only as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to go under the front loop only of the next stitch. Then we're not going to yarn over and pull up a loop. 
My hands wanted to do it. That's the instinct, right? Not yet. Now we're going to very carefully, I'm going to pull my hook back down here. We're not going to pull it out of the stitch, but I'm going to pull it down so that I can put it under the front loop only of the next stitch. Okay. So I've got my original loop I had on my hook. I went under just the front loop only of the next stitch and the front loop only of the stitch after that. Then I will yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Does it look exactly like a single crochet? No, but it looks a bit more like a single crochet than a single crochet two together does. So let's do that one more time here. I'll just go ahead and do it here on the next two stitches. We're going to go to the next stitch and go under the front loop only. We're not going to yarn over and pull up a loop. We're going to then go under the front loop only of the next stitch. Then we yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. There we go. So that is just, that's called an invisible decrease. It's a little bit different. Um, like I say, it's something that I discovered when I started making amigurumi. I hadn't seen it before then. Um, so it's something that you can use for this pattern and you can use in other amigurumi patterns as well. So let me see here. That is the invisible decrease. And then, as I say, like most amigurumi patterns, this pattern sticks with primarily single crochet stitches. However, we've got these wings and these wings are, again, are mostly single crochet. We do have double crochets, but the unusual stitch here is in row three. It is the Pico stitch. Now, Picos are a lot of fun. If you um, have made Picos before, you know they add basically a little, a little blip, a little loop to the top of your fabric. Let's look at our pig here and see if we can spot those those picots here on the crochet. I'll just make sure I'm looking from the right side here. It is so tiny. It takes me a second to look at it myself. There we go. So here are our stitches. And you can see at the top how there's these sort of little bumps that give it that, well, basically that wing shape, right? Those are going to be the picots. That's what gives those little, those little loopy bits without, um, you know, without having to change different heights of stitches, we can make those with picots. Now, picots can be made lots of different ways. So anytime you have a pattern that calls for a pico, you're going to want to go ahead and come back to your abbreviations or your special stitches or your notes, whatever it might be for that pattern, and look for that definition. On this one, a pico is chain three, slip stitch in the third chain from the hook. Easy enough. So let's go ahead again on our bigger yarn so we can see what we're doing demonstrate a pico. Now, let me pull up my loop here that I was working with. There we go. And now I'm just going to go ahead and set myself up by making another single crochet. We usually have a stitch made, you know, before the pico. And then we are going to chain three. So one, two, and three. Then we slip stitch in the third chain from the hook. So that's the first one we made. Now, when I first read the instructions for a pico, I know it was very difficult to try and figure out what part of that stitch I was going to go into. So the part I found that way I like to do it, I think it's a little bit easier than trying to twist your hook around and you know your yarn and get back in there and ending up with kind of a twisted thing. What I do is I simply take my hook back to the front of my work and I go under those top two loops but you can see I'm holding everything off here to the side. So I will go under those top two loops of um, that stitch and slip stitch there. However, this one wants us to do it in that third chain. So that's where we're gonna do this one. Again, every Pico is a little bit different. If it wants you to slip stitch to that stitch that you made prior, then you can come in from the side. If you wanna do it in that first chain you made, then I'm going to go into the back hump of that chain, kind of the same deal. By working into it from the side here, we don't have to try and twist it all around. So I slip stitch in that third chain and there's a Pico. Let's make another one. I'm gonna start with a single crochet in the next stitch. Like I say, there's usually a stitch beforehand that kind of builds up underneath that one. For this pattern, it is most likely also single crochets. Oh, slip stitches. So tight stitches on this one. Um, so let's do that this way. We're gonna do a slip stitch and then a Pico. 
Chain three. One, two, three. Find that very first chain you made. Find the back hump of that chain, not the back loop, but the underneath hump, the bottom of the chain. Insert your hook in there and slip stitch. That keeps the picots standing up nice and straight and you don't have to try and twist around to get back into those top two loops. So let's do that one more time. I'm gonna slip stitch or yes, slip stitch in this next stitch here. Give us a little bit of space. And then chain three, one, two, three. Find that back hump of that first chain we made right there coming out of our fabric and just slip stitch right in there. So that is what our picots look like. So let's see if we can pull back up our thread here and do some more of these stitches in our thread. We've got our little, our little snout here, and we talked a little bit about front loop and back loop. Let's join with our single crochet. I'm gonna take my pink yarn or my pink thread here. And I definitely think this is going to be easier if we start it with the slip knot on our hook. There we go. So I've got my tiny little slip knot there right on my hook. Now it's yarn or it's thread rather. So I'm gonna keep a pretty good tension. I'm gonna hold on to my tail end, give myself as much leverage as possible here. Let's see if I can get us good and centered. There we go. And now got my slip knot on my hook. Get us in focus here. I'm going to insert my hook under just that back loop only. And it may take a couple tries, but there we go. I think we got it. We're under just that back loop only of that stitch. So I can let that hang there while I find my yarn. Yarn over, pull up the loop, and yarn over and pull through two to finish the teeny tiny back loop only single crochet. So we would just continue that on around. Now I obviously did not finish um, round two on this one, or it didn't. It ended up pulling back out on me. But we can do a few of these stitches right there. There we go. So that is the back loop only, and then of course front loop only. We want to sort of just pull our hook. Oops, very carefully. Don't want to lose that loop. There we go. Pull our hook to the front of the fabrics and kind of get it at an angle is helpful. Centered there again and come up under just that front loop. We can see there's that back loop in the back. So we know we're in the right spot. And then we can yarn up, yarn over rather and pull up our loop and make our single crochet. So now with our little thread guys here, let's try a couple of those invisible decreases. I'm going to get just as close as I can here. We want to find the next stitch and go under just that front loop. There we go. Then find the very next stitch and go under just that front loop. So you can see I've only got three loops on the hook there. I've got our initial loop from our previous stitch and then just the front loop of those two next stitches. Then I will yarn over, get that back in focus there, and very carefully and gently pull that through all of those loops. Sometimes you have to do them one at a time. There we go, it's through the first two, and there's the third one. And there is our invisible decrease in thread. All righty. I think I do. I have enough room to do one more. Let's see. Maybe enough room to do. Well, I don't think I do. Let me pull that back out, and we'll do it again, so we can see that one more time here in the thread. Ah, I don't want to pull out too many loops. Keep some stitch in there so it's nice and attached. There we go. Okay. Get ourselves up close to the camera. Get my hook turned around the right way here. 
So we go under just the front loop only of that next stitch. And then aim as best you can here for the front loop only of the stitch after that. Oh, did I go under both? Nope, I did. I got under just that first one. There we go. So then I can yarn over and pull back through all of those loops. Again, that second one always wants to be a little tricky. You just gotta turn the hook the right direction so you can get that to go on through. And there is our second invisible decrease in thread. So that leaves uh, the picos. So we definitely wanna do that. So <clears throat> let's see, looking again, we slip stitch when we make our picots. Let's go ahead and do a few of those the way the pattern's written. We um, have a slip stitch to and Oh, this one, sorry, I'm having to read this impact instructions a little bit because the wings are a little different. The wings are worked in rows, not in rounds. And that's why. Okay, so let's do a little slip stitch here. And then let's make a pico. We're going to chain three. One, two, three. There we go. See if that shows up there. You can see our three little tiny chains. And now, what we want to do is get our hook under the back hump of that very first one. You can see, we we'll barely see right, right there. Oop, had it for a second. Right there is that back hump. Now, again, this is teeny tiny thread and especially the wings themselves are metallic. So it's unlikely anybody is going to get close enough to see exactly where you ended up sticking your hook to finish your picos. But we do want to try and aim for that back loop there. I think it's actually a little bit easier to pick up than going under the top two loops, um, especially in thread. So you can kind of see it stands out just a little bit. Then we yarn over and make that slip stitch. And that is the teeny tiny Pico. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna slip stitch to the next stitch just to give us a good base here. And we'll do one more. We're gonna chain three, one, two, three. And then we're going to slip stitch in that very first one I made. Again, if you cannot find that particular loop or you're not sure exactly where your hook's going in, then odds are nobody else can tell either. I'm just going to get mine there. See if we can get that to show just a little bit better there. Here's that back hump of the chain. We yarn over and pull through and yarn over and pull, or don't yarn over again, rather. It's a slip stitch, so just pull on through that last loop. There we go. So now, because they're in the other color, it's a little easier to see. They stand out from the background a little bit more. Just what those tiny picos do. It's a great way to add that little extra bit of movement here to our pig's wings. So that is the un unique or unusual stitches that are used in this pattern in both thread and yarn. We've got just a few minutes left. Um, Renee, can you help me out? Are there any questions I can answer about our tiny, what is it? When pigs fly, fly crochet amigurumi. <laughs> it's a long oh. name. It's hard to remember. <laughs> it is a long, that's why we called the class tiny critters. It's very yes. easy to remember. <laughs> yes. And look at this cute little tail, you guys. So simple. The tail is literally just one row. All you do is you chain nine and um, single crochet in each chain to the end. And there we are, a tiny little, tiny little tail. Super cute. So no questions yet, but if anyone wants to weigh in with any final questions. That yeah, would that be would great. be great. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. But yeah, so there you can see those picos a little bit. These are a little stretched out. These are done a little differently. Um, like I say, usually when you make a pico, you've got a stitch at the bottom of them. This one's a little different. You just um, skip the stitch and pico again. So very, very cool. Very pretty. Oh. How do you do the eyes? I just saw that one pop up. You've got a couple of options. Um, there are these black beads right here. 
Um, the ones I purchased came in a couple different sizes. So you'd want to pick out, you know, obviously two that match unless, well, it's your project. You do it the way you want to do it. You can get silly with it if you want to. I don't know if I have the exact same size that they used here. But um, for the instructions for adding them, trying to see, it just says so on. So there's not a whole lot of instruction for that. We can see here, if I bring it way up, the designer used just a little bit of thread to sew them on. It looks like she used black thread, which I think is smart because it, it blends in with the bead. Um, it does make it a little harder to end up hiding it inside the pig, but it's basically, let me see if I've got some supplies here that I can show that with a little a little easier. Um, I'm gonna cut my end here. If I wanted to sew the bead, Aha, big examples. We've got a big bead <laughs> and some bigger yarn. This will be a little bit easier. Um, what it looks like she did was uh, took a, probably a piece of cut thread here. Again, it looks like she used black and threaded it on a tiny needle. You would need a much smaller yarn needle than this one. Um, they do come in different sizes. Um, for thread, you can find smaller ones out there. And then my guess would be she came from underneath the fabric the inside of the pig when she got to that point, um, maybe put a knot in it ahead of time. It's a stuffed animal, so you don't need to worry about the back or the ends being real pretty. So you could put a knot right in that thread if you wanted to. Come up onto the right side of your fabric, find your bead, send your needle through your bead, and then just go right back down either into the same spot or something real close to it and then just straighten it out so that it faces out the correct way. Let's see, I'm pulling on just one end so it really wants to turn, but there we go. If I pull on both ends, it faces the right way out. And then of course you can take that same string, come over to the other side of the face and add those eyes. Now, she did do this at the end, which makes it, I think, a little bit more difficult. I would recommend if you do want to add eyes to your pig, might be worth doing that when you're about this far into the body. Take a little break, you know, pull up your loop, put a stitch marker in it so it won't come undone and go ahead and add those eyes before you then crochet the rest of the body. I think it's just going to be a little bit easier. Um, otherwise you have to kind of try and hide and bury those ends inside the finished pig. And that is just a little bit more difficult. The other thing you want to do um, in terms of taking breaks, as you're crocheting it, as, as you start closing up the body, you'll want to do most of the stuffing before you make the last round or two. And then you can add just a little bit more and then finish up those last two rounds. You wanna leave yourself a little bit of room, but you don't wanna try and do all the stuffing through our poor little piggies, you know, ever decreasing derriere. So just leave yourself a little bit of room to get that stuffing in there. Um, the other option, if you don't wanna do the beads, there are, this is shown here, on our instructions is you can make a French knot. You could use black embroidery floss, or of course, if you've got some black thread, great use for a couple yards of your black thread. Let me see if I can find another color of yarn here so that we can show. We're gonna be mixing our yarns a little bit. I've got some sugar and cream here, but let's see if we can show how to do a French knot on our little piece of fabric here. I don't do these very often. I'm not an embroiderer, I'm a crocheter, but um, I will do my best. So, and again, I know not white's not great, but we're going to be doing it on the uh, yellow here. So I wanted to have a contrasting color. So I'm going to go ahead, I just put a knot in it. Um, I probably need a bigger one, but I'm gonna go ahead and thread my thread or my yarn on my hook here, or on my needle rather. And then wherever I want that eye to be, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that to the front so that the knots on the back side of the fabric and the fabric, the yarn itself and the needle are on the right side of the fabric. And then this is where it tends to get a little bit tricky. And sometimes it takes me a couple of tries, so bear with me here. But I am going to hold on to my little piece here. I've got my needle. And I am going to essentially yarn over. Oop, I pulled it. Pulled it too far. Let me pull that back through. Shoot, should have made a bigger knot there. Let me try that again. Okay, I have to hold on to it with my fingers. Okay, some tension on it here. We are going to 
yarn over twice, we're going towards the fabric here. So you can see my needle is facing the fabric. The end with the yarn is back here in my hand. Now, you can do this twice, you can do this three times, you can do it as many times as you like. So again, maybe practice this with a bit of scrap and to see how you like to do it. I'm going to do this one more time because I feel it's a little bit more secure with three. Then what we're going to do is go down in nearly the same spot, especially with crochet. It's not a woven fabric, the holes are a little bit bigger. I like to go through an actual stitch a little bit, not in between stitches for this, because if we go in between stitches, the whole thing can just pull right through. So I try and kind of go into a stitch a little bit, just so there's something to sort of stop our progress as we go through. So now I'm gonna go ahead and push that on through. And if we're very lucky, we will have a French knot. We did not get lucky. Let me try this one more time. Like I say, the French knots are a bit of my nemesis, but once in a while, once in a while, I get them done. Let's try it this way. I'm gonna try it a little bit differently. We're gonna hold the yarn like this. We've got our needle. We've got the yarn going away from us. We're going to yarn over twice here. Then I think I'm going to just kind of do that third one again. Go down into the fabric right near there. See if this one catches. And it did not. I apologize again. Embroidery <laughs> is not my primary skill, and French knots have always been my nemesis. I am sure there are some excellent French knot resources on Michael's YouTube channel. Um, check out an embroidery class or um, on the Yarn Inspirations page. They've got some good ones. I apologize. Fresh knot, French knots are not my skill. I thought I'd give it a whirl, but it didn't work. Um, again, the beads are what they used in the actual pattern, so you can go ahead and use the beads as well. Might be a little bit easier than a French knot. But that is all the time we have for today. So I wanted to thank you so much for joining me for this tiny crochet creatures class. Once again, this is the When Pigs Fly Crochet Amigurumi. And uh, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Awesome. And you know what? I love the idea of the beads because you could get some really crazy disco yes. beads if you wanted to. <laughs> you absolutely could. Like I say, French knots are fun when they work, but man, are they fiddly. Always yeah. been my nemesis. <laughs> Take your battles. <laughs> yes, indeed. Indeed. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Tamara. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Don't forget to share your work with hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag yarnspo. We can't wait to see your little piggies. And just a reminder that you can find more classes on michaels.com and the recording of today's class at michaels.com slash classes. All right. Bye y'all. Thanks Bye. everyone. Bye everybody.